American culture, right? I mean, no one is going to make friends just by coming out and saying, hey, everybody be nice. You're going to come out by, you're going to make a lot of money by getting under the other guy's skin and then his reaction and then going back and forth. That's why, that's why this, it's set up the way it is. You know, if you can't really get people to come to the table out of love, you can get them to come to the table because they don't want the other guy to have the last word. So I wanted to go and, you know, dive into this a little bit, you know, and, you know, I wanted to give a couple, I wanted to go from degrees. So I want to start with good woke or what I think is good woke, you know, like woke that definitely didn't bother me um, and things that I'm like, well, fuck it, why not? Because a lot of times that's where, you know, I end up being with a lot of these issues, you know what I mean? So we're not going to base this on what, you know, uh, uh, the myopic bigots think, because we know what the myopic bigots think. Like, we know where they go, oh, my God, they made it a girl. It, it, it was always a girl. Like, don't worry about it. <laughs> like, it's not that big a deal. You know what I mean? So everyone freaks out about uh, the new Star Trek. You know, everyone freaks out about uh, Lovecraft Country. Everybody freaks out about G.I. Joe. Honestly, I just I just want to I just want to say the ghost of H.P. Lovecraft freaked out about Lovecraft Country. <laughs> so, um, oh, good. Yeah, but yeah, I, I would literally go to his grave just so I can feel him roll over. So that's fine. <laughs> and Greg can do that. He's from Rhode Island. Well, he lived in Rhode Island a long time. So, yay. Yeah. Good times. But precisely my point, you know, like these were examples of, you know, we didn't even call it woke. You just did it. You just did it and you grew it organically and it was respected. And I feel like it's the growing it organically and the respect for the character that people are really looking for. Now, to be perfectly clear, this is all just new bitching. It's not like people didn't make bad remakes or you know, come up with really shitty uh, ideas for reinventing characters before the woke movement started. But now all of a sudden we have to pin it on that when a movie sucks. So I don't want to do that either. You know, this movie was going to be awful no matter what happened, but motives matter. You know, and if you take your eye off the prize and you're not thinking first about entertaining, and, and first about sending a message or making a point, then you're going to half-ass it. Make your point or make an entertainment. Very few people can do both. So that's gonna take me into, you know, examples like, you know, everybody's favorite uh, Ripley from Aliens. Bad ass female lead. Didn't have to apologize. You didn't have to think twice about it. You were just talking about that uh, scene, that skit with uh, Richard Pryor and Chevy Chase. That gets really intense. But the point is that was at a point where black people, they weren't apologizing for who they were in that period of time. And so they did not need sympathy and they weren't asking for it. Like it was just an explosion of, uh, of black creativity and individuality that was absolutely gorgeous. But in the vein of Star Trek, in the vein of G.I. Joe that literally had a character for damn near every ethnic group and so on. You know, like all of those examples, the new Voltron, it turns out Pidge is a girl. Fine. You're gonna tell me that Pidge was your favorite character? No one gave a shit about Pidge, all right? <laughs> all right, Keith, Keith. America. Pidge. Yeah, right, you know, it turns out Keith is gay. Again, who the fuck cares? You're gonna tell me you were waiting to see Keith get it on with a chick? That was going to keep you, you were waiting for that? America, America. Seriously. So, I mean, for, for the most part, the anti-woke arguments are just bitching. It really is just plain bitching, stuff different, me mad. You were bitching about bad sequels way before any of this shit started. So that's good woke. Bad woke is when it's not organic and it feels like a public service announcement. You know what I mean? When it's like just race or gender swapping or you just miraculously make a character gay, which side note, if that is a gay male character, I want to see them kiss. Okay. I'd say, 
need to see it. Okay, I don't like the way that it gets thrown into this kind of icky margin where they just stand awkwardly across from each other and we just assume they're getting up. <laughs> if it was a man and a woman, they would kiss. If it's two men, show them. And that's the kind of half ass wokeness I'm talking about. You know, if the, the new Little Mermaid, yo, if that whole soundtrack is not soca, if it is not. <laughs> got some drums, you're talking about black people, you're talking about water, make it about black people. But when you just throw a black character in there, then you're just throwing them in your story. You're not telling their story. You're half-assing that respect. If you're gonna make this mermaid black, make it in the Caribbean. It should basically be like, you know, carnival underwater, basically, underwater carnival, you know, and then, I will do that. And I have a personal preference as a, a, someone who studies history. I never want race or gender swapping with real historical figures. Because, and this is my personal view, because when you do that, you forgive that period. Then you let the people who want to deny those incidents say, oh, look, you know, there, there, there's a black character standing there in the background and you don't see all of these medieval white people freaking out about it. See, racism's a myth. No, 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 no. <laughs> you were unwashed, you were illiterate, and you were racist, and that black character should not randomly be there. I'm now, I know saying, some characters- They're probably thinking they're Moors. Just, just saying. Fuck that shit, man. Morgan Freeman didn't belong there either, man. Nah, dude, nah. It's just, no. And if it is, even if it is historically accurate, no one responding to the fact that there's a black person in medieval England, come on, man, that's gotta happen. There's gotta be a reaction and you have to be, when it comes to telling those stories, you have to show it now, you know, Hamilton. Okay, yeah, a lot of people thought Hamilton was really revolutionary, but other than the fact that the brown people were being switched out, they really didn't do anything really heady or edgy with this material. So this was actually what white people want, you know, like for people of color to fucking get on board and stop telling us things we don't want to hear <laughs> and make easy to understand rap music. <laughs> Damn it. And that's the one thing, but you know, and, and lastly, but not leastly, like I could probably go on for a long time on this subject, but I'm gonna try to keep it short. Um, it, the thing about the, the, the woke movement, and I think that as, you know, people who love democracy, everybody needs to understand this. We have to have a healthy mistrust of institutions, and that is an institution. And don't get me wrong, some people definitely deserve to be called out and have their careers crushed. It happens. But actually giving over power to some amorphous internet mob that we know for a fact is corrupt in a thousand different ways is unbelievably dangerous. You're basically like, this is Skynet's bitchy little sister. All right, <laughs> like this is another version of some kind of uh, 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 intelligence that is going to control us through our mutual malice. And I think that is equally dangerous. I think we need to have, because we don't know who these entities are and we don't know what they are, but we, there is evidence that this conflict is exactly where they wanted us. And whether or not they gave a shit about Dr. Seuss banning some books is irrelevant. The important thing is it got people fighting. And so we have to have, we have to vet it. We have to have a mistrust of it and we can't make it the lead because the internet, I'm all for it being the document of the human race. And it's definitely the toilet of the human race, but it shouldn't be the conscience of the human race. Oh, that was a, that's a beautiful point right there. And, and very, yeah, it's very interesting as particularly in, how much input goes in, right? And we've had Rashan, who's mentioned on the on the on the the program before, and I wholeheartedly agree with him. How fanboys ruin everything, um, and, and we know that. <laughs> like, and we're kind, you know, it's kind of funny because it's three basically fanboys who also are like, 
fucking everybody calm down. Uh, I just have to throw out every single time you bring that point up because yeah. I feel like this needs to be said. Game of Thrones would have ended better if they actually kept Jon Snow dead. There you go. So, right? It, it, it Clearly, you know, it's very interesting, as you say. That's a longer over, conversation. Yeah, go ahead. Right. You know, and that's, I guess that's the tricky part is how do you, you know, having representation uh, and having the things we want, as you say, without giving over necessarily to the internet mob. At what point, mm-hmm. you know, what's, what's, what, <laughs> where is somebody, uh, what do they call it? They call it uh, uh, fair game. That's what they call it in Scientology. <laughs> where is someone <laughs> fair game? <laughs> I can't believe I just went to LRH for my, you know, my ideas here. Man fuck, was a pioneer. Fuck me. Uh, but there is that Off kind of like question. Sure. Yeah, it's, it is that question, you know. Um, part of part of me sometimes feels like, say, you know, I, I think sometimes sometimes I'll hear people rail against quote unquote cancel culture, and it's like, no, you you just like your cancel culture, and you don't like the other person's cancel culture, right? You know, mm-hmm. you didn't like, you wanted to boycott Nike when Colin Ka- Kaepernick took the knee. Uh, but you were upset that other people wanted to boycott Goya when you know when they went against your view, and they were just saying, "How ca- how dare you? You know, exercise your right as a citizen to buy or not buy something." Right. <laughs> so sometimes I'm kind of like shrugging my shoulders. I'm like, I- I'm at that point of just saying, "Hey, you like it when it's your thing, and you dislike it when it's not your thing. So shut up and buy Nike or don't buy Nike. I don't give a fuck." Um, right in the end that'll be on the company and you know america uh you get you get the free market working it out and you know there's a certain extent uh, as i'll start my as i'll start my my two cents worth here there's a certain extent that the free market does uh figure figure it out in the sense of if it's a good movie and people like it they will watch it i don't care how much you want to bitch about what's woke and what's not and what what you go what do you like I'm going to Trump's all. Yes. You know, I'm going to go to something that was sort of a little cultish and I'll go to my good woke here. Uh, and I've been waiting for a while to talk about it. Um, it's the television show, the expanse. Now that is based on a series of books. I'm going to be quite honest. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in my late forties, actually officially pushing 50 now, just turned 47 a couple weeks ago. So I, I can officially say I'm pushing 50. I have two children, a, a job, okay. Oh, I want to get over 51, bud. You are- uh, love it. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. Lo- uh, well, all my beauty secrets are clearly working. Um, <laughs> that <laughs> all this gray in my beard, uh, you know, that I just do not, uh, there's no way that, um, I have the time to read uh, the, the series that is, and they're quite heady books and they look fantastic and I hear nothing but good about them. So for those of you who are, are, are literary and having the time to read, God bless you. Keep going. Right now, my my literary experiences is actually listening to podcasts. So that's why I've been keeping up with it. It's the way I try and keep my mind sharp because I'm just collapsing and going to bed. Um, but to me, this is like the best example of woke entertainment uh, because I feel like uh, I feel like it gives a really wonderful representation of what Earth might become if we somehow make it out of this little period right now. That's a big if, people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a giant if but to set up the world real quick earth is basically overpopulated uh and run by the un to the best of its abilities it's not it's not a total shithole it's not great people don't always have jobs there there's lotteries it's tough to get you know the upward mobility is tough everybody does have what they seem to need overall uh but you know this this idea of unlimited growth is kind of is is over right we just don't have any place else to go and we're doing our best it's not like i say it's not total mad max post-apocalypse it's actually pretty good but there's upsides there's downsides um mars has formed its own colony and uh they are more they are the rugged individualists right they call the earthers takers you know uh, the Earth Earth people call them dusters, right? You know, they're, they're trying to terraform this planet. They're trying to, you know, they're out there on the frontier. Uh, they're, you know, there's a great deal of now suspicion, which Mars, which sort of started as a colony of Earth, there's there's military buildups. Uh, the Martians have to train in, in uh, one of the things I love about the details on all of this, the Martians have to train in 1G. They're very proud of that because they're, they're you know, ready to go to Earth and fight if they need to because they've been raised on a planet, but that's in a lighter gravity. 
Um, I love the space combat in it because people 